What's going on guys, it is I once again here, some Joe Schmo, with another reaction to The Expanse. Season one, episode number three, titled, Remember the Can't. Now guys, it is starting to, starting to kick up a little bit. You know, we are three episodes deep into season one. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been saying just, the first eight episodes is kind of the more of the buildup and just afterwards, it's gonna kind of like blow up, but so far so good, I'm, I'm, relatively enjoying myself with this. Yeah, there's a lot of information, but still, I think it's, uh, you know, paced very well. Uh, I'm following along relatively easy. I know I do have a couple questions that I'm asking myself throughout these series, um, and, you know, even have my list of characters I'm trying to keep track of, but all things considering, I'm enjoying myself. And that's all that really matters in the end. Um, I do want to say really quickly before we get into this, uh, if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning on in. The Expanse community has been great at welcoming me into the little fold. And yeah, feel free to drop a uh, like, comment, subscribe down below, or maybe flip that, reverse it, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this reaction. And as I said before, let's keep it a little spoiler free. And uh, hopefully, you know, you'll be able to uh, welcome a new fan into your hearts. You see what I did there, that's pretty good. And as well, uh, you know, just want to give a little even bigger shout out to, uh, you know, and just to keep you guys a little bit informed, we are recording this here on March 17th, which is good old St. Patrick's Day. So cheers to you guys. I know this is probably coming out Saturday, so it's going to be like three days after that I film this that we're going to be bringing this out. But still, you know, we might be uh, cozying it up to the uh, Prince Porcelain here in the next day or so. So you never know. You never got to get ahead of the curve quickly in this one. So with that being said, guys, let's jump into this episode and cheers from some jump. So, cheers from some jump from some Joe Schmo. Why is that so hard to say? Little cheers from some Joe Schmo. Boom, baby. It took me so long to get that down. Stay calm. Hands be and when you talk in and before is weak. Oh, is he teaching? Oh, she's teaching him how to like, like sign, not sign language, but no, like speaking on. some uh, like alien language. Hey, uh, why don't you stay at the streets today, okay? Huh? It could get dangerous out there. Maybe you too. Feels like they're kind of like building up towards like a revolution of some sort, right? With like a lot of the OPA talk. I forgot the uh, names of the guys that were stealing water in episode two, but uh, they're kind of like laying the foundation that Something's gonna happen. There will be no preemptive arrests of any OPA members. We're an Earth Corp. We will remain impartial. The Scopuli is the ship that that holding guy got scooped up trying to save. Well, Julie Mao's on it. You know, the OPA's probably heard that I'm looking for one of their own by now if we just let it go. Just file the report, close the case, enjoy your tax-free bonus. Cool, thanks, appreciate it. Good talk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what a... What was that? Why, why did it beep like that? Easy, fellas. He's coming with us. Alex! Alex! What's the significance of him, though? I mean, I know he's like one of the pilots, right? So it's like... They're trying to destabilize Sirius. Belters get thirsty, OPA fans the flames, and Mars gets the excuse they've always wanted to sweep in and pacify the station. This is a security issue. So Mars is like trying to use like the OPA as like an excuse to then like come and like have to clean up the situation and be like, oh, you guys can't like handle your own kind of thing. Or like, like obviously like the, what they're anticipating is what OPA is going to like destabilize everything at the Siri station. And they're going to be like, cool. It's our duty to please that. <laughs> we don't even know that the Martians are behind this. You want to war with Mars? This will get you one. But the Admiral's right. Until we know more, we sit tight and wait. But on the flip side, I can definitely see, though, Earth also trying to find an excuse to, like, have war be an option as well, too. So it kind of goes both ways. The Kent, buddy! Remember the Kent! Remember the Kent! All right, that's enough free speech for today. Break it up. You heard the man, you're going. Come on. You have your dead market, well, brother. I am still curious, though, like, what he did, though, that gave him that title, like what he did to betray, uh, betray his people. Unless he's called that because is he originally a uh, belter? Because I, didn't they say or allude to him having an operation in episode one that made him like uh, 
Earth-like, right? A cute girl kidnaps side job. See, to me, it sounded more like a time suck for some rich dirt cider. You love it when they drop off the board. Yeah. I like it to be my idea. Cover for me, will you? Just for an hour. I don't know, Miller. Is your ambitiousness gonna get the best of you, though? Like, it almost feels like, like, the... Like, his captain wanted him to, like, drop it, though, right? What is that, fish oil? That's not, hey, it's good. Good for the heart. I believe it helps with like, uh, like bone density, right? Oh. Five fathers, three mothers. The, yeah. Oh, that's. Eight parents, one child. Yo, that's great. Wait, what? This guy can just take a pill and be able to tell everything about you? That's terrifying. Why would you destroy the Canterbury? What? What did you do with Alex? You were a problem in the Navy. Good. You were dishonorably discharged. He ordered me to fire on a belter ship. He was a smuggler? Who was smuggling people. You had no way of knowing that at the time. But I was right. Earth and Mars have been stepping on the necks of the belters out here for over a hundred years, and I didn't want to be the boot. Damn, looks like Mars and Earth aren't as different as they thought they were then, huh? Why did you nuke the Canterbury? How long have you known that Naomi Nagata was an OPA officer? What? What? You never wondered why someone of such obvious intelligence was wasting her life sealing cracks and fixing gauges on an ancient crumbling ice hall. These are the hallmark skill sets of terrorists. Unless, is that like fact or are they just making assumptions based off of like, are they just like pulling random facts out? Are they trying to make them like turn against each other or something to like, you know, like a cop would be like, oh, so-and-so already told us everything. You might as well tell us, you know. I'm looking for Anderson Dodds. He might be my friend. Kind of runs things around here, right? You might know about that. I don't sussa nothing. Well, I don't sussa that OP8 tat on your forearm there either. Is that just part of your plumage? Mm. Man, it seems like OPA is everywhere, though. Mars is working with the OPA. No, 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 no. It can't be. Yes. We have proof. We think they're making a move to take serious. The Secretary General is going to present the evidence tomorrow. Stealth ships are first strike. I don't know, it's, at this point, it's just so hard to believe. It's so hard to believe any side because like you can, like I already know, obviously tensions are so high with them both, but it's like, at what point are they going to do something just drastic to cross that line or cross that threshold of like no return where it just enacts full war, you know? Cause like you could tell both sides right now are just fine. It's like, it's like, you're looking at me funny. Just do one thing, do one thing, and it's gonna be all out, brawl out, man. You look very well treated. Yeah, well. I flew with the Mars Navy for 20 years before I shipped off on the Kent. Oh. Uh, so, so you're helping them. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Chief. Settle down. They let me clean up out of respect. Respect. It's just like, yeah, more and more, they're just trying to fracture them all. You honestly think that Mars destroyed the Canterbury? Why would they do that? How the hell should I know? Then think about it. That beacon we found that you found so easy? What if it was planted? Mm -hmm. What if it was meant to be found? Planted? By whom? Who stands to gain if Earth and Mars get into a throwdown? How well do any of us really know Naomi? Uh, it's all coming undone. These men refuse to top off our water tanks. We'll die up there without it. So die. Mars killed the cats! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, 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 back these guys hey, up. You, Mars, you. Up. You're taking this, side. Oh, uh, here you we go. There, right there. The revolution's about to start, y'all. Get hype. Oh. Give the Martians the water. Oh, dang, it's this guy. It's, yeah, Dr. Ashford, right? From Resident, <laughs> Resident Evil 2. Anderson Dawes, you wanted to talk? You crewed her up on a ship called the Scapuli? You know, the one that Mars used to kill the Canterbury? That would explain your interest in her, huh? The Earth Corp may pay your salary, but you were born here. Yeah. I think that under that ridiculous hat, there's a belter yearning to find his way home. But though, like, what happened, though, to Miller, though, to, like, Kind of like want to turn his back though on 
his like belter history though, you know? You didn't know her. Nah, but you did. I'll ask around for you. See if anybody know anything. And thank you for preventing bloodshed earlier. Series will need men like you. Hands where I can see them, please. We were answering the distress call. Belter scrubbed distress calls all the time, nine times out of ten. It's pirates. Our freighter captain would not have answered it. So who did? Who registered the call? Unlikely. The pilot? No? Mm. No, he's one of us. Was it you? Was it you? Hands where I can see them. The hell is this? You join up? Wait, what? That's an option? What did you go? <laughs> you guys are getting paid? Naomi's OPA. Uh-oh. Is that true? Who cares? They'll say anything to get- Exactly. Come on, guys. They told me that you faked your medical records and signed on to the can to get away from a drug dealer who wanted you dead. Well, that's true. <laughs> He's like not even trying to hide. He's like, yeah, I mean, of course I did. Are you OPA? Unbelievable. I'm coming from you. Oh, she's gonna say it. I'm not your darling, and you're obviously one of them. All right, all right, let's just settle. You didn't down. answer my question. We're mm. putting all our cars on the table here. Look, kids. So what was my big plan, huh? To sit on a shit bucket like the camp for five years while all of this got set up? Sleeper agents. You ever heard of them? Well, screw you. Guys, guys. Human shield. You ever heard of those? Here we go again. Hey, I'm ready to talk, but only to your captain. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Alex, man, just keeps having the air suffocated out of him. Watch this, like, shed the entire time. Yeah, right. We picked up a spike in chatter between Mars High Command and nine MCRN facilities believed to manufacture stealth composites and gunships. Nine? I thought there were only six. There were more than we thought. They were taking inventory. I leaked to DeGraff that Mars was giving stealth tech to the OPA. He did what I thought he would. Dang, she said a trap. Was and since they had to ask, it means that they didn't give it to anyone. Oh, okay. Which means that Mars isn't working with the OPA or trying to take control of Ceres. They didn't destroy the Canterbury. Then who did? Someone who's trying to start a war. Ooh. Would it, it couldn't be the OPA though, right? Could they be that strong though? Or have they been like operating under the radar the entire time? No one suspected them. You will put out the fire you started by telling everyone, everywhere, that the Canterbury was destroyed through the actions of Naomi Nagata, an operative of an OPA sleeper cell. Are you willing to make Dang. this Dang. That can't be true. That even if Naomi is OPA, without her, I'd be dead. She saved her own life too. That's the drive plume of a ship decelerating hard toward us. We've been tracking it inbound ever since we picked up your distress call. It's not one of ours or Earth's, and it won't answer our hails. We suspect it was sent for Naomi Nagata. Hmm. Extrapolate the possible destinations. Miller, you need to get your ass back down to Medina now. We got problems. Brett right, right here. Shadid nixed it. She wanted to inflame the situation. Yikes. Yeah, we wouldn't want to upset them. Damn it, we got skirmishes in the Rossi Burt. You want to take it? Go. Be all right. Uh-uh. Call me crazy, but splitting up in a situation like this is probably not the worst idea. Please return to your homes. Return to your homes. You heard her. Get the hell out of here. Scramble! Get those kids out of there! Oh! Jesus, dude. It's starting. Diplomatic credentials have been revoked. I've been banned from Mars for life. Wow. Do you remember? You were very young. 
couple of us played cards at your house. I remember I didn't like to be excluded. Well, you always lurked on the side, quiet, obedient, but watching. Finally, one night, you demanded to play. You didn't take any hands, but you clearly understood the fundamentals. And when the deal came to you, you called your game. Tennessee, three-finger, hold em. Father took it very seriously. He asked you how to play. You said, we each get five cards. You dealt them out. Then you pointed to the far end of the yard, and you said, now. Whoever gets to the tree first wins. You dropped your cards, and we're halfway there before anyone else realized what was happening. Never seen your father more proud. Is she, like, playing the long game? I was terrified for you. I didn't know why. And now I do. You will do anything to win. Yep. Just like your father. I won't play with you. Ever again. So did she just, like, do that intentionally to find out how many... Um, of like those stealth, uh, I think it, she said it was like stealth tech hubs. Was she just doing that so she like they could find out how many they were holding, or to get the real number or something like that? Uh oh, here we go. Stay calm, okay? Take all thing when you get. Tona, it's not over, Urta. It's just beginning. Oh no. Was I right about him? Is he gonna get it? Oh! Remember the cat. Holy shit! What? They're just gonna end it right there? Oh man! Well, I knew. <laughs> I knew this was coming. I felt it in my bones that Dimitri just, he was, uh, he just didn't have that, that oomph, you know what I mean? Where it's like, I, I thought, I thought I was gonna be wrong, but then it's like, if I wasn't, and then he's just like, he came out. Oh man, that sucks, dude. I felt it in my bones and it happened. Um, there's a lot to unpack that episode. So I, okay, so, man. I, forgive me for not knowing her name, uh, and I'm probably going to butcher it, Crescent, uh, Crescent, um, who was like playing the long con game though. It's like, I just don't trust her. It's like, she, you could tell she kind of felt bad in that conversation, right, with the Mars ambassador, but it's like, it's like, is that her end game is to just like, uh, is her end game supposed to just be like, she's trying to, is she the one that's trying to start the war, but she's trying to masquerade as like not wanting to start something because like, she kind of came off as like, oh yeah, Mars, what's going on with that? They might be starting something. And then like, she like kind of releases that information to uh, uh, the Mars ambassador. Um, and then it's like kind of, or she tries to like, you know, persuade him or coerce him into like giving information. Uh, I don't know, man. There's like, uh, she comes off as like, kind of a little bit of like, a, a, kind of like a, a slimy kind of politician kind of uh, a, a role in this show right now where she's like, does she have ulterior motives right now? Is she trying to do, like I said, the long con game? That story about her, you know, as a kid and how she, you know, dropped her cards and like try to get, like, is that her, or is that a metaphor for her trying to get ahead um, of this whole thing? Does she foresee something happening and she's trying to get ahead of it through, like I said, like uh, espionage or politics of some sort? Um, and then we have like Naomi and James Holden and all his crew is like, is she really an OPA agent? I don't know. I, again, I don't know if like, there's a, like a really heavy tone of like, who am I supposed to believe right now? Cause there's a lot of just different, it's almost like an analogy for how uh, uh, Miller was uh, doing a, a show me the, a, um, a, a course for the trajectory of where Scopuli was supposed to go. Show me these different trajectories. It's almost like a metaphor for where this show can potentially go. Like there's so many different plot elements that could uh, unravel that takes you in so many different directions. So I don't know, man, I'm on board right now. I I don't know. I, I, I mean, I wanna say that if they're trying to allude to like Mars isn't to blame and then Earth isn't to blame uh, or Mars wasn't the one that attacked uh, the uh, Canterbury, is it like, are they trying to say like either there's another game or there's another uh, a player that's entering the battlefield? Is there uh, OPA, Is are they stronger than we're led to believe they are? A lot of questions, guys, a lot of questions. Anyway, that was episode number three. 
remember the cant and things are starting to starting to unfold a little bit, guys. I hope you are enjoying this time here. And again, you know, what do I know? I'm just, I'm just some Joe Schmo along for the ride reacting to The Expanse. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.